So, good morning, good afternoon, good day to everyone. I'm Daniel, I'm a senior principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I work specifically in the real-time kernel team. My backgrounds are in the real-time embedded system and also uh, runtime verification. And, but today I'm here to talk specifically about real-time and the real-time Linux analysis tool set that we get merged in this kernel that will be released in the next week. So pretty new stuff here. So yeah, Linux is a real-time operating system because people has, have been using it as a real-time, right? Uh, <clears throat> there are many, there are multiple reasons why people would like to use Linux uh, in, in this context, uh, but the main arguments are, are our software stack that we can run on Linux. There are a lot of new, new cool stuff for, uh, for example, ROS and the other uh, software stack, more complex software stack that are being built natively on Linux that are enabling a new set of uh, embedded systems, right? But also because of manpower, it's, it's easy to get people used to Linux more than any other uh, operating system nowadays in the more hacker side, let's say. But also because Linux achieves like the desired, desired timing behavior. So it works as a real-time operating system. And, and some of the key features to help on that are the fully preemptive kernel, the Unicorn T, right? The real-time scheduling, like SCAD deadline, and the real-time mutex, and so on. Oops, wrong. So one, one of the problems, however, is that is in the way that we show the timing properties of Linux. Because nowadays, Linux's test or Linux was historically being developed using a set of black box tools that try to mimic workloads. For example, we try to mimic uh, uh, event-driven application with cyclic test or a plumbing application with SysJitter and OSLab. And, and what these tools report are a, a latency number, right? And this is important for multiple cases. For example, we can show if these applications that empirically Linux can deliver like a, my, uh, less than 150 microseconds of a cyclic test latency with system under stress, or even 10 to 20 microseconds on, on isolated and fine-tuned systems. So they're good. Uh, however, uh, the black box approach has some drawbacks. And, and the main reason is that it doesn't explain from where the, number, the numbers uh, came from. So they, they give no root cause analysis. And uh, to do so, to try to explain things, uh, we, we use trace, right? But trace, trace is easy for tracing developers and for a kernel expert, but that's not that accessible for those that are not expert. And many times explaining all the details, it's time consuming and uh, it, it's, it's hard to, to reach the masses with real time without um, a good way to show and to explain the reasons why the, the, the Linux is able to provide the timing guarantees, right? And uh, with the, the, the merge of the, the print RT, the real time kernel will be just a regular kernel. So we have real time to the masses. And basically, all kernel developers who have to run RT analysis or, or a sort of RT tests on their on their patch sets before they even submit maybe to the mailing list to show that they are not causing regressions, right? But not because the real time kernel will, will be part of the kernel that everybody is interested in learning all the details of the kernel and learning how to debug it like, it, in just, like if everybody was a, a real time uh, analyst, right? So, that's the main motivation behind the, the RTLA. It's a new approach. So instead of using a black box approach, use a white box approach where I see things happening on kernel. And uh, it, it does so by integrating both the workload that mimics a, uh, the, the syntax workload that mimics a real workload and tracing. So we have parts of it in kernel, which we will enter in details here in this presentation. And uh, the internal part is, is an integrated workload and, and the tracing part. And we have an interface in user space to make it easier to use and to do data analysis of the, the, 
the numbers or the tracing that can occur. So let's go first into the, the kernel tracers part, <clears throat> right? Uh, nowadays, in the, in the first, uh, let's say, version, which will be released in the next kernel like in a week or so, uh, it, it uses two tracers that were recently added to the kernel. They are the OS noise tracer and the timer dot tracer. Uh, the OS noise tracer measures the operating system noise. Uh, it's like a sysjitter or OS flat uh, on steroids. And we have the timer not tracer that measures the activation delay of a timer triggered task. It's like cyclic test on steroids. So do you have noise tracer? Okay, it might, it might look like I'm, I'm going to another field, but I will explain the reasons uh, soon. So the operating system noise is a, a well-defined uh, metric in the AGPC field, right? And, uh, and it, it basically says the amount of interference experienced by an application uh, due to operating system activities, like uh, interrupts or handling the kernel like software queues and so on. And it's generally a, a fine grain metric in the sense that it's measured like uh, in cycles or in time or, or in the amount of operations. But it's generally fine grain. So explain a little bit the, the, the metric <clears throat> from, from the, the, the HPC world, and then I will explain how does it apply here. So generally, uh, HPC or workloads are composed of parallel jobs, right? Do you see my pointer? pointer? Question? Yes, we yep, do. Yep, we should see it. OK, good. <clears throat> so generally, have a system with multiple uh, CPUs, right? And uh, then you just did a dispatcher, dispatcher work on all CPUs and, and wait for the, the CPUs to finish the work to reassemble the, 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 the final work together. And uh, generally, these systems are configured to, to give these CPUs to just one specific job. So they isolated these CPUs. The problem with the, the OS noise is that if you have more noise in one CPU than the others, it ends up delaying the result, right? Giving an, like a no use of CPUs or delaying the response time of a, a test both in parallel, or if this was a pipeline of tests, right? It would be delaying this, the, the response time. And nowadays you have some critical HPC real-time workloads that requires a maximum noise noise of the system to be as low as 20 microseconds per second or, or a maximum of the operating system can only add a noise of at most 20 microseconds at once. So, and that's, that's the base for the OS noise tracer. As I said, it's a kernel tracer and it's dispatched the workload. It's one kernel thread per CPU. So it mimics that HPC workload. And while running this kernel thread, it tries to compute or, or to detect any gap between two reads of the time. So anytime it reads the time and reads it again, if it's higher than a given threshold, it will uh, point or raise the, 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 the attention for a noise from the operating system. Uh, one, the reason why this workload is, is running in kernel is that I can synchronize the tracing and the workload using lockless uh, synchronization. So this allows me to give no false positives to results. So any information I'm giving, I'm sure that they were not, uh, I'm sure, for example, the number of uh, occurrence that caused that noise. But I will show you that later in the example to be more, more clear. So why it's, it's useful for the safety critical uh, field, right? Because it's a common practice to partition a critical system into uh, some CPUs devoted to critical workloads or, and some CPUs for non-critical workloads. And uh, we do this by isolating the CPUs, right? For example, one could isolate one CPU from all the operating system activities just to run like a ROS2 or to run a Autosar uh, middleware framework, right? So that CPU will be devoted to a single task. And, and this task will do like a scheduling of multiple uh, tasks inside of it, for example, in a, in a framework like ROS2. 
Uh, and TOS noise tracer is useful to assess that the partition and, and insulation are working and how much interference we are receiving from the operating system. Okay, using tracing, right? <clears throat> Here's an example of, of uh, the OS noise tracer, tracer usage in using the regular tracing interface. So uh, I go there, I, I join to the, the kernel tracing directory, and uh, I set the tracer and read the trace. And then this is the summary of the tracer. So at every uh, period, it's a low parameter, I'll show later, uh, the tracer reports that, okay, in this period, it's CPU zero, it runs for one second, the maximum noise it receives was 190 microseconds, and it yielded this amount of CPU time in, in percentage. And the maximum single noise here was of nine microseconds, which is, is not bad. So the longest uh, single noise, it was of nine microseconds. And here, it also starts telling a little bit of the story behind these numbers. It's not all, but it's, it's already started to tell like, there were 18 noise detected from hardware. No NMI, uh, 1,007 RQs, and uh, 18 software RQs, and just one thread. Right? But then things get worse on the other CPUs, and, and you can check this. So the, the tracer has some options. So for example, if you want to, to exercise just a fewer CPUs, or you, have, or you would like to to measure how much noise your application, your periodic application will receive uh, empirically, right? So you can set the, the period and the runtime, and you can say things like, stop the tracing if I hit a, a latency higher than this amount of number. And you can also find a tool to say, how, how much noise do you consider a noise or you tolerate? Okay, good. Now uh, it, it was showing, uh, right? Here we are showing a little bit more than black box, but still it's it's gray uh, box-ish kind of tracing. Let's go deeper. Let, let's try to analyze and understand in the details where the noise is coming from. So what can cause the noise in the operating system, right? Uh, we can have basically, or we can have, no, we have basically four abstractions for, for tasks inside the kernel. We have the NMIs, the IRQs, the software queues, and the threads. And by order, like they, they have such such like a, a, a fixed priority scheduling here because the NMIs preempt all the others, they are the highest priority. Then we have the IRQs that are preempted by NMIs, but not preempted by software queues and threads. Software queues that are preempted by IRQs and NMIs, but not by threads. And the threads that suffers preemption from all these. This, this sort of tasks in the name. But also, right, we can have noise that's not caused by the operating system itself, but by the hardware. For example, on Intel, we have the SMIs, we can have stalls in the pipeline that freezes the processor, or we can run virtual machines and the host can steal time from uh, the, the gas, right? So how can I then observe this, this noises from the tracer? So the OS noise tracer also adds a set of uh, trace points that notifies me the occurrence of any of these tasks abstractions like NMIs, IRQs, software queues, and threads. And uh, these trace points, I will show you an example later, but these trace points, they report the amount of noise caused by any activation of this. And as we know that like the thread can be preempted by this these other class of tasks, the tracer already discounts the times. For example, if I have uh, my workload running, then it's preempted by a thread. Then an IRQ happens on top of this thread, right? The noise reported by the thread noise, we already discount the noise added by the IRQ on top of it. So, the data can be can be read as it is because the tracer is already doing all the calculations for you. Uh, yeah, and there is one one trace point that tells you, okay, the workload observed this noise and it was caused by this amount of tests that stole time. It will be easier with one example. So I go to the tracing directory, 
I said I want to enable the OS noise tracer. I set the events that I want to see. In this case, only the OS noise events. And I say, OK, if you find a, a noise that is higher than eight microseconds, just stop the trace that I would, that I would like to, to have a look at. And here's an example. So the sample threshold trace point shows that workload detected a noise. And in this case, it was a, a noise of the duration of 8.8 microseconds. And more than that, it just not that it detected the, the noise. It also says that this noise was, was caused by two uh, previous uh, tests that run. Then I can just look back in the trace. The two previous uh, test noise added, just the two, not more or less. This number is precise because it's synchronized with the workload and the trace result. Boom, boom, it was caused by this IRQ noise from the timer with a duration of 2.8 mi microseconds. And then plus this thread noise of the migration uh, thread that added me more 3 microseconds. Wow, and then when I, when I see that these two things doesn't, uh, doesn't account for all the 8 microseconds, right? And that's why these two things Tracing and the workload mimicking the, the real workload, like a synthetic workload mimicking a real workload. That's why they are complementary and that we need both. Because from trace, I can get how much time it executed between the starting of the test and the exit of the test. But there are things that happen before the, the context switch. For example, before a IRQ handler starts to run the software, the processor needs to stop and start handling the hardware part. The same thing for thread. After the, the thread context switch to the workload that I was running, there are some contexts that need to be restored before the workload actually gets the processor back. So that's why I, the trace helps me to, to, to get a picture of how much each of these tasks give me or how much they help to compose the noise. But they are not enough to give me all the picture. The, the, the final answer is given by how much the workload actually felt this noise, right? So these two things are complementary, and that's a novelty of this tracer. And as you might guess, there is a paper about this. It's under review. Uh, as soon as it gets uh, accepted and somewhere, I will make this all these details on, on a scientific paper public. So that was one tracer. The other tracer is the timer lag tracer. So the timer latency <clears throat> has been used as the map for the real-time Linux kernel developers, right? And yes, indeed, cyclic test, but it does, it is a timer testing tool, right? More than measuring the latencies of the scheduling. If you read the code, it will say this is a timer. Uh, High resolution timer testing tool. And that's the timer latency uh, inspiration. So, like cyclic tests, it empirically measures the observed scheduling latency of, a, for example, highest priority, but not necessarily of, of a thread or a thread that is prior. Uh, so, the timer lag tracer measures the same metric of a cyclic test. But it has an, it's integrated with tracing and it gives even more information as you should. So why like timer latency is important for safe crypto system, right? Because it's equivalent to, to measuring the response to an external to any external event for timer triggered events, but also from an interrupt on from, from any kind of uh, hardware, right? Any external uh, thing from the operating system. And uh, the timer lag tracer is useful to, to assess that uh, the externally triggered events are timely handled and also to identify how much uh, uh, activation latency or how much scheduling latency the non-critical workload is adding to the critical workload causing a, a delayed response time of the critical workload. Just trying to illustrate here the workload. So the idea between, be, behind 
the cyclic test or the time lapse uh, tracer is that I have my, my workload here, it, it's in red. It schedules a timer in the future in a, in a, a wall clock time, right? And then it goes to sleep. When the hardware notes that the time T arrived, it, it will fire an IRQ and this IRQ will wake up the thread. And then when this thread starts to run, I will compute the, the delta between the time I set the timer and the actual timer where it uh, started working. So, and then, and then I will say that this is my uh, cyclic test latency or thread latency for timer lab. But timer lab goes, goes further. Instead of only reporting the thread, it also reports the delay uh, perceived as an interrupt or as a hardware interrupt uh, handle, handled by the, the operating system, right? The, the interrupt handler. And that's useful because, useful because there are many critical applications on, on, on safety critical system that cannot afford going to a thread. So they are developed uh, already in the hard IRQ handler of the driver, right? So this number is also useful, but it's also useful to detect the root cause of this delay. If it was caused delaying the, the, the hardware interrupt or the thread, because the root cause are different. <clears throat> so using the timer lab as a tracer, right? So we go there, goes to the tracing directory, enables the timer lab uh, tracer and read the, the trace file. So, in this example, uh, in the CPU zero, there was, uh, in the context of the IRQ, the timer latency was less than a microsecond. And then after that, still in the same CPU, the timer latency in the thread context was of 11 microseconds and so on. So, by here, we already have twice as much information as cyclic test. The cyclic test would only report to this number. And uh, there are some configurations that we can set. They inherit the same interface from the OS noise, and we can set these parameters. But it also serves to one us, right? So what can cause delay in the timer latency? Uh, likewise, in the operating system noise, we have these four abstractions, the NMIs, RQs, software RQs, and higher priority threads. But we also have like a previously running uh, thread with lower priority that was running uh, a section of code with preemption or RQs to say. And uh, okay, how, how can I observe these, these values? Like in the OS noise tracer, I can use the same trace points to show the, the, the noise created or the interference created by NMIs or IQ software to interest, right? Uh, but in addition to that, the thread, uh, the thread uh, trace point, instead of giving me the entire execution <clears throat> time of lower priority thread, it will report the time from the IRQ occurrence. So it's only the time that the lower priority thread added as latency to higher priority thread. Uh, the idea is that here I try to <clears throat> automate as much as possible the analysis so one can read the trace and not spend time trying to, to understand too much of things. The things are self-explanatory. So a little bit more complex setup uh, example so I say I want to see the, the timer lab tracer. <clears throat> I enable the OS noise trace points. And uh, I say, I would like to get a stack trace of the IRQ handler when it, it fires. And I would like to see this in the trace buffer if it is higher than 500 microseconds. So if the timer, uh, timer data is as measured by the thread is higher than 500 microseconds, it will also print a stack trace of the IRQ. So I can try to understand what was running there when the IRQ happened that caused the, the delay on the thread schedule. And uh, like here, I say, okay, uh, 
okay, this is the print stack. The previous one was saying stop the tracer if it was, if it was like 500 microseconds. Uh, if it hits a thread that is higher than 500 microseconds. Yeah, after some time, I saw that there was a stop tracing CPU 7 and I read it. Uh, and while reading, I, I see that, okay, here is the IRQ timer latency. It was only of one microsecond. So good, it, it's a, a very good number actually. And then I see that there was an IRQ noise and it was the, the local timer. It's expected, right? Local timer is, is running the, the wake up of the thread. It's running the, the IRQ handler of the timer not tracer. And it took 11 microseconds. It's bad, but not that bad. It's, we are trying to, to get 500 microseconds, so it's acceptable. Um, after that, the system also received yet another uh, interrupt, hmm. right? But still seven microseconds, not, not that, that the deal. But then I see the thread noise. Well, the thread noise was of 838 microsecond, that's huge. So from these three kinds of noise, it was certainly the thread noise that caused me the, this delay. <clears throat> well, what, what was the, the, this thread noise running, right? How can I get that? There, that, uh, and, uh, and the trace is already explaining. I just need to go to the next slide so I can fit all in, uh, in the slide. So here it is, my, my, my thread, the thread uh, noise. And I can see in the stack trace where this thread, the, the is mode was, was running. And you see, and it was loading a dummy load. Uh, so it's running, loading a module that has this dummy load one millisecond uh, function. That, it, it's a, a fake use case, right? Just to illustrate. Here it was, uh, I was loading a driver that was by, by, by exercise running one millisecond with preemption disabled. But the trace was able to capture that, right? And here I see there was the delayed SEC, and then I have the stack trace of my RQ. So if it was a real case, I would have to look in these functions to see why they were taking time. This, all of these examples and all these use case, I got straight from the kernel documentation. So you can just go to the kernel documentation of the OS noise tracer and timer lab tracer, and read all the explanation for, for, for these cases there. So yes, so far we have been talking about the, the, the kernel tracers, right? But uh, <clears throat> kernel tracing, it, it's, it's not, let's say, for everyone. It, it, we hope everybody could, could have time to learn all the tracing features and go there. But, Life is hard and we don't have time to do all the things that you, we would like to do, right? So we need to make life easier for people. So RTLA is a user space tool that serves as a front end for setting up, doing the tracing and collecting data of those tracers. So it in, in fact transforms those tracers into a benchmark tool. The, this tool is, in, is written in C, and, and it's hosted inside the kernel, so they are part of the kernel. And you see here, it says part of the kernel repo. And all the documentation about RTLA is already integrated into the, the kernel documentation. So it did, in this initial implementation, there will be more tools, but in this initial uh, part, uh, it implements two tools, which are the RTLA OS noise, which uses the OS noise tracer to manage the operating system noise, in the RTLA timer lab that measures the timer latency. As I said, so the RTLA OS noise interface for an OS noise tracer, it adds more options, like it, uh, it helps me to set the priority to the thread so I can run OS noise tracer like if it was a periodic uh, task running on SCAD deadline, for example. And uh, it also added this interface for other tracing features. And, and I'll show you in a demo video later, how we can use that. And it has basically two different uh, modes. The top mode shows me an, uh, an overview, a summary of the OS noise measured by the system. 
and US noise hist it computes histograms of the operating system noise. The timer lot, it's interface for the timer lot tracer. Likewise, it adds more, more options like setting priorities, collect more data, and uh, it also adds interface for more tracing options. And like OS noise tracer, it, it, uh, it has a top that shows me an overview of the system and a hist that computes histogram. Okay, let's go straight to the point. I, I'm a, a user, right? And I'm testing my kernel RT setup. I want to measure the latency and generate a report of, uh, of the trace of the system if I have latency higher than 50 microseconds. So I can try to understand or create a report for the for the RT Linux users and mailing list. Right? So nowadays what I need to do is setting up cyclic test, setting it to, to stop the, the the tracing if I if I hit a given latency. Uh, and also, and here's the tricky part, right? I need to set a, a tracing session. And, and it's not that straightforward for a user or even for a kernel developer that just care about, let's say, uh, file systems, not about the scheduling. So then setting up the traces, it's, it's a little, little bit, uh, let's say, no determinist because if you're not expert, you don't know what, what to enable. And it depends a lot on, on your system, what you have to enable. And then you need to ask around on RSC or a mailing list. And with the tracing on, you need to, to figure out by yourself, computing things by hand, what was the, the delta between this event and that event. It takes a lot of time. And I know it because I have been doing this kind of things for 10 years now, right? So I, I got I got tired of doing it again and again and again and again. So how much easier is my life using RTLA? You see, recalling I want to test my kernel RT setup. I want to measure the latency and stop the tracer uh, if it hits a uh, uh, 50 microseconds uh, latency and use this trace to, to report the problem. That's it. That's the command line you need to use. Uh, RTLA timer dot, uh, the, the, the make file already make a, a link to the RTLA binary called the link is timer dot. So if you just run timer dot top, it will fetch uh, the RTLA timer dot. And I'm seeing here this option A is automatic trace option. I will show a video later, but just introducing. This is the automatic trace. It will enable the things that an expert would enable and stop the trace if this value is hit. Us. So yeah, with this single command line, it measures the latency, it sets up the, the tracing session, it enables the minimal required events, and, and that's good because the less events I enable, the less overhead and the less impact on my analysis I have, and it stops the trace and, and saves the, the result into a file. That's as hard as this. So. In essence, what RTLA is doing is the automation of an expert analysis. That, that's what like me or, or any people in, in the Red Hat real-time team, for example, or people that use real-time kernel will, will do in, in, to start analysis. Obviously, it doesn't do all the analysis by yourself. It's, it's the starting point, but it's a very clean starting point. So let, uh, things will get even clearer more clear with, um, with uh, a video demo here. So let me switch tab and let's So this is a video demo. There is, there is a demo. There is a link for it in the presentation. So this is my system. I have a single NUMA node, right? And uh, this is the, my CPU setup. So I have a 24 CPUs. Is it such the, a PC is an AMD Ryzen? It's my developing working stage. And uh, here's my, are my kernel parameters. I'm running the kernel RT. I'm running uh, it with uh, some setup here to, to reduce the, the wake up latency. 
Then isolating CPUs, the sum of the CPUs. So I break from 11 to 23, I'm setting no hard school, I'm setting RCU no callbacks. Try to isolate part of the system. So running OS noise tool first. OS noise uh, helped, right? Here are the options. You see, there are all those options from the tracer that I explained. The automatic trace mode. I, if I want to run on a fewer CPUs, I can set the duration of the time, the, of the, the session. Like if I want to run the test for five hours, the output trace file, some uh, uh, events, extra events that I would like to enable, like enable high resolution primary events or work queue events that might be causing my, my, my noise. Uh, and here I can find a tool, for example, the scheduling parameters. And uh, this is the OS noise talk. I'm saying I would like to get through any latency that is higher than one microsecond. And here we are. So the system is running, this is the duration. This is the amount of runtime that my workload was able to, to use or to compute. Right, I'm stop on the 15 here. So this, these are my isolated CPUs. These are my non-isolated CPUs. Here the, the runtime is equal to the period of one second. Sorry, 15 seconds. The workload was able to, to try to capture this 15 microseconds, but while we're running this 15 mic, this is 15 seconds, sorry. It ran for 15 seconds. And in these 15 seconds, the total noise of this CPU, CPU zero, for example, was 33 microseconds. No, milliseconds, right? 33 milliseconds in five, 15 seconds. And this is how much CPU is available for my workload. In a single period, right? This was the highest uh, noise that I, I got. So in one of these periods, there was a maximum noise of two milliseconds, but this is the sum of the, the noise in the entire period of one second. But uh, all the noise, the largest single noise was of 20, 28 uh, microseconds. In all my system, there are no hardware noise, some NMIs. And then here you can see the no hard school working, right? No software IQ because the parameter is eternal. It doesn't have software IQs in, in the context. And this is the amount of threads that caused the, the noise. If we jump to the isolated CPUs, now we can see the difference, right? Now I'm reaching like a seven nines, almost seven nines of CPU time to my critical workload. In, in, in 15 seconds, I only received two microseconds of noise. And it was a single noise from one, one IRQ. You see, you can clearly see the advantage of using CPU isolation. And uh, but th this is just an overview of the system. And yeah, you see the RQ as no hard school is enabled. And we don't have like 1,000 uh, ticks per second. Uh, so this is the hist option. It computes the histograms of every single noise, and it's more useful for fine grain analysis. It has more options to set up my histograms, right? And here I'm running the histogram only on 10 CPUs because it's more, there is more, more data on the histogram. So I need to restrict the number of CPUs. It will run in silence, right? It will run in silence for a given duration or if I hit Ctrl C. And here I, I hit Ctrl C. So here I can see the, the amount of time that on CPU zero, I detect a, a latency of one microsecond, two microseconds. And then you can make nice histograms, like a plot from this. And here I have a summary, like this is the amount of noise that were detected. These were the minimum noise, the average noise, and the maximum noise. Timer dot tracer. So here's a view of the timer dot. 
These are the options, like the, the option that I showed in the example, but also more advanced tracing options. I can set the priority. By the default, the time lapse runs with priority 5095, which is the, the, the number that we generally use testing the kernel. So timer laptop, boom. It's running, it's showing the latest observed on my system, right? These, these are the numbers that would be, oh, okay. There the system was idle. Now let's patch a kernel, compile kernel in the background to stimulate the system. And here I see that the workload, the, the background workload is influencing my non-isolated CPUs but not the isolated CPU. But still, it's bounded, right? But it's, it, it's better on the isolated CPUs, which is intuitive. And here you see that there is also the RAQ uh, timer data that, that like, for example, cyclic test doesn't give us. So it, it's already more information. And it runs. I should have made this video shorter. Yeah. So the timer out hist. It's a histogram. Again, it runs until I hit control C. Or if I can stipulate a duration. Oh, I can use the dash D duration. Yeah, Daniel. Daniel from the past. I explained this using voice. Uh, and here you can see the amount of data, right? So I have an histogram for each IRQ and for each thread. So I, I yeah, lots of data. <laughs> let's, uh, let's reduce the, the CPUs. So histogram only for a, a fewer set of CPUs. The histogram is something that we use on, on our, our CI testing. And here it is. You see, I, I, I see how much how much times the, the, the timer was activated. A histogram for your IQ, a histogram for threads, the minimum, the average, the max. Use with care because it's, it's a lot of data. So, okay, there I was using only the, the more benchmark tool. And here I'm, I'm setting the trace, let me just go back to the video. So I set the trace to trace the system and to stop the trace if a, a thread latest higher than 20 microseconds is hit. And then I'm waiting for it to run. Then I see that there was a, a workload in the background. And you all can see that I need to improve my, my skills as a YouTuber because I'm not good doing videos, but yeah, here it is, it, it hit the 20, here 25, and it saved the trace. Looking in the tail of the trace, oh, here it is, so it's, uh, it hit on CPU 4, there was a thread latency of 25 microseconds, and, uh, in the CPU 4, there was a thread noise of 6 microseconds. And the IRQ noise, that's really good. And an IRQ noise, okay, this is the thread. This is the IRQ noise of 13 microseconds. And uh, my IRQ, let's see. Yeah, my IRQ took 3 microseconds. So I can compose the, so let's go back here. So I can cope, I can see it, right that here the most of my latest was caused by the timer IRQ of 30 microseconds, helped also by the CC, which was the compiling uh, the, the limited background that I was running. And then from here I can start the going deeper in the anomalies. The overhead, right? Here I'm running the system, I'm compiling kernel in the background. And then I, I run timer dot top. 
duration of 30 microseconds. And here I'm tracing, I'm only capturing the values from trace. I'm not doing any more tracing on the system, right? I'm not trying to do the root cause analysis. Just running the minimum uh, trace, uh, the minimum trace as possible. So I can see, I can get a picture of the system, right? Then my latest are, are on, on the, around 20 in the max, now there's a 30, right? But still 20 to 30, 10, 20, 30. And these are my latest in the, in the timer. So now we also enable trace tracing, right? And by enabling tracing, I also add more events to the trace buffer, and this could cause more overhead. Still, uh, even if tracing enabled, the, 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 the picture of my system is still the same. So if you see there's 23 there, 20 to 30, it will eventually hit the 30 like the while not tracing. But yeah, the, the tracing is optimized and that's a, a good thing of having the, the processing of the trace in kernel because it's using optimized way to do tracing. I'm not saving too much data to the to the trace buffer. I'm not enabling too much events. I'm just enabling the minimal enough that gives me information without giving too much impact on the, the analysis. But the good thing is that I can even run uh, more complex tracing, right? And we are almost there, almost reaching the end of the talk. So here I'm also enabling, other than running timer not talk, I'm also enabling this, this, this iOS noise RQ event and enabling the histograms from the F trace. And here's the histogram. You see, it's a more complex line, but it shows that I can also enable uh, complex tracing using the simple interface from timer. So the system is running. And once I hit stop, go oh, Daniel from the past, hit stop. Yeah, it's, it's running here and collecting also histograms in, in background. You see the overhead didn't get high, still in the same picture that we were seeing before. And once I stopped, you see the overhead is it's the same that we were, really, we were seeing before, so it doesn't impact that much the system. But I can have a histogram of all the threads and how much noise or how much they delayed my, my timer dot uh, uh, workload. You see here I have the, the, the C compiler, the migration thread, and I can see how much they, they caused in, in, in delay, right? It's less than 10 microseconds. And also not only threads, I can see like the IRQ noise. So this completely changed the picture of the analysis. So we have way more information now. Local timer, 21 microseconds, that, that's huge. So in this system, I should start Understanding why the local time is taking too much. Absolutely, this is a simple system. Uh, in reality, you see threads going higher than, than IRQ. So now you see, this is my network interface. And that's it, the video is, is finishing. And uh, okay, this is just a minimal value product. There are more to come, right? That's a return to the final slides on my presentation. So. RTLA is upstream, you know, we are finally, Daniel is not talking about future, right? <laughs> Daniel is talking about the present. <laughs> because, because of my research, I'm usually talking the future, but now I'm talking about the present. Uh, so these traces are merged, the traces were merged on 5.14 and the user space doing 5.17. And the advanced trace support skewed for 5.18. These tracers are already enabled on Fedora, CentOS, and Red Hat. Uh, they also, they're also enabled on SUSE Linux. And the RTLA package is on the way for Fedora, CentOS, and Red Hat. And I also know that people in SUSE are working on it. And there will be more tools based on the RTLA. And uh, the next one is getting that uh, the proof of concept uh, RTSL tool uh, into RTLA. 
But that's it. Very cool, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you for showing this work. Looking forward to it. Does anyone have questions for Daniel? Oh, okay, Fel uh, Felix is applauding. <laughs> okay, no question. Uh, feel free to unmute and ask questions if you've got, we've got a few minutes left before the top of the hour. If anyone has questions. I'll just start things off. I'm wondering what sort of feedback have you been getting? Do you know people using it already now or, or what are you looking for help with? We, we are running it inside Red Hat already for our uh -huh. analysis. And uh, Clark, which, he, which, yeah. which is, if everybody knows Clark, Clark is using it for enabling more systems. And, uh, but that, it's a new tool. It still needs to, to get more users other than the people in my party of yeah, Red Hat. Uh, it, it will happen. Like one reason why not many people are, are using it because RTLA was not yet released. It will be released in, in the next kernel. Uh, okay. The two has advantage enough to to, to become a, a, a day user for other people than than just us at Reddit. Sure. No, definitely. So, it, is there anything that you're looking for help with on this beyond yeah. users and giving feedback? Get users. Users and users and more users, please. Yeah, users and more users. There, there will be more tools in the future, but uh, so, so far we have been targeting to make these two tools very mm -hmm. useful. Use it and report bugs that we need to stabilize and make it more and more useful. Cool. And if people, where do you want, where do you want people reporting bugs and concerns? The LKML. And, LKML? Uh, Okay. Linux trace the valve. Okay. Reporting bugs on those mailing lists. Cool. Yeah. They, one good thing that, that, that we made that will be probably generic for other tools is that the, all the documentation, even the main pages, are integrated into the kernel documentation already. So mm -hmm. you go to the kernel docs, search for RTLA, you have all the main pages there. Okay, great. And uh, Gunther, go ahead and unmute and feel free to ask your question. Daniel, work. Um, uh, I'm working at Kuka, um, doing real time. Um, the real time is responsible for 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 the system. We're running, uh, doing weird things on it, and um, I'm just curious um, on two things. I mean, so one thing is, um, I saw your command line options um, only feasible to use it in the main tracer, or can it also run the, the trace instances? This was one of the- Good question. Oh, we went straight to the tail. Okay, that, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, you can run it on instances. That, that's an advanced, you are an advanced tracing user. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it works on instances. The since 5.16, the timer dot and OS noise tracers can run in multiple instances. It's one workload running per CPU, right? But you can get results on multiple instances. And the RTLA also uses this because RTLA expects one instance to collect the, the data that you see on the, the nice uh, output, like the showing the timer dot latencies, and another instance to do the actual trace of the system. So I can then dump this trace into a file. So it already uses multiple instances in the RTLA. And so it can be used by the Running RTLA, you can also go is uh, tracing instances and TOS noise trace is the uh, trace instance. So you can watch the trace there by running uh, OS noise trace. And I have another question. Today we had an issue or we, we love, uh, we are the impression um, having an issue of um, uh, that we have some interaction with the few Texas. Um, where we were not, not I would say, uh, whether the hash map could, uh, could um, cause some interference since we, we saw some interruption of the real-time thread running on one kernel, uh, one CPU, it was interrupted or latent uh, by, um, by another thread running on the standard 120 kernel prior, uh, which never, was intended to have uh, some footex interaction, but the, we saw some footex interaction. We see, say, every 10 um, system boot ups, something of that. So I'm curious whether one could as well um, hunt such issues 
where we have an additional condition. In the, the, the OS node treasure is able to capture that picture that you have, right? That, that's it. it uh, one of the reasons why the tracer, uh, that, that I would like to do this integrated thing is that many times we are running the workload, uh, but we, without tracing, and we have like these, these issues that doesn't happen that often, right? So the idea is that by running the trace and the workload together, we will always capture the root cause. Then what is causing your problem in this specific? I would ask you to run timer dot tracer and, and get the 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 data it exports, and then we can start from there, start from data, mm -hmm. and, and and try to to understand where exactly in the code, thing. and that but that's it, that's it. The idea of timer dot now is to give the entry point. If there is any other analysis that you guys have a use case and would like to contribute, that's the idea of our TLA as well because it's it's a single binary that. Mm -hmm. I would like to see all kinds of analysis that we need. So okay. it's possible to go to TimerDot and add another tool to it. Let's say TimerDot uh, Futex analysis. And then dispatch a workload that exercises the Futex analysis, capture the trace and display it in, in a nice way via RTLA. That's, that's the future, for example, one use case, the future of RTLA. Integrating all this kind of analysis that we see on a daily basis into a single tool that we can we can use, but the, the latest analysis of each case, it's, it's I need to see the code and need to see the, the trace to to give an opinion what is causing your problem. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Well, I think we're. I don't see any more hands raised, so I would like to say thank you very much for doing this, Daniel. Um, it's lovely to see a new tool emerging and. Um, encourage anyone to, you know, follow up and um, if they've got questions and help them out on getting it hardened up for real use beyond. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Pizza time in Italy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Pizza time, yeah, lunchtime over here in North America. <laughs> <laughs>